today I was spilling all of the tea on Notion databases. Databases are probably my favorite thing about Notion. Since they're so versatile, there are tons of things you can do with them and I'm going to show you just a couple today. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kat. I love sharing about Notion, productivity, and just some of the little things about life. Before we get started today, I do wanna just say my husband is out in the driveway working with his buddy on a project. So if you hear anything that sounds odd, that is probably what you're hearing. They're talking out there and doing other things. And I have the dogs in here with me, and of course, they're very interested. So let's just hope that nobody interrupts me too much today. <laughs> I'm also excited to share that I have been working on adding some new Notion templates to my shop. I'm turning some of my favorite things that I love using in Notion for me personally into templates for you guys. So I will be sharing those very soon. Let's get to it. Okay, so I have an example database here to start with. This is so I can just kind of mess around with it without messing up anything that I've got going on in my databases. So this is just what a normal table view of a database would look like. A big tip that I have for you is to not think about this too much like Excel. I know it kind of looks like an Excel spreadsheet, but databases don't necessarily function in that way. You can still kind of navigate it like a spreadsheet as in like using tabs or enter. If you're working in a database and you hit enter, it moves down. And if you hit shift enter, it creates a new item command enter enters that item. When I'm working within a database, I do a majority of my backend database work <laughs> um, from this over here, these three dots. This is where like all of the settings are. I think that it's easier to see all of your properties at once and edit them all kind of together if you're working over here within the property section. So that's my preference. Here you can also add a name for your database view. So you do example view. And then you can also change a little icon if you want to. I'm actually in the process of changing all the icons on mine just because I think it's cute and it has a little bit of personality to have different icons, but that is kind of time consuming, so I'm still working through it. <laughs> the next thing you have is your layout. This is the type of view that you have. There is a few different options here, and I'm actually gonna come back to this when we talk about the different views. Next, you have your properties. This just shows everything that's going on. This was one that it started with, but you can see here that you can see deleted properties if you want to bring them back or just delete them outright. This is where I like to edit all my properties because you can see them all. And you can also change very quickly and easily what you actually are looking at in this view. So here, if I hit this little eye, it goes away and I can just turn it back on very quickly. You can also edit the property here if you want to change like this one with the date change the format of the date. This is a very quick and easy way to access that. And then you can also, again, change the little icon if you want. So next up you have filtering and sorting. Filtering is just asking it to only show you certain things based on a condition. So for one, you could do the date and then have it relative to this week. I don't actually want to do that, so I'm just going to delete it. Um, but that's an option if you want to do that. Uh, sorting, you can sort the date by ascending or descending, which would be backwards totally up to you if there's something specific you want to be seeing. Next we have grouping. You can group things. So if I want to say group by date, um, it will change and filter kind of filter your items and then show them in those groups. I really like this for certain things, not for everything because sometimes I just think it's harder to see. But for example, with my shopping list that I make every week when I go to the store, I like to group things by grocery section. So produce or on the shelf things or refrigerated, that kind of stuff. That makes it easier for me to know where I'm going to find these items. Next we have sub items. This is something they just recently added. You can turn this on if you want. I haven't decided how I feel about them quite yet. I occasionally use it for something that I know is gonna take me multiple steps, but it's all still part of like one big item. With my tasks, I have a little like done check mark. And when I hit the done check mark for all of the sub items, it does not automatically check off like the main item, which to me, that's what makes most sense, but that's not quite how this works. And then it creates a another item for me to have to check off, so. I don't know, I haven't decided if like that's something that I really like yet or not, but it is there if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and say create a parent and sub item real quick so you can see it actually adds two relational properties to the database that relates the database to itself. 
You can also see that there's little toggles now on the examples. You can add new sub items. And then as soon as you do that, it fills in those relations to say like the parent item is example three and the sub item is this sub item that I'm just gonna call sub item one. There you go. Other than that, you also have the option to search the entire database if you're looking for a specific item. And you also have the option to make a template. When you hit a new template, you can autofill all of the things that you might need to ahead of time so that when you create a new item, you can just click on that template and it will already be made for you. I like to use templates for two main things. One is if you are using your database to hold pages, in which case you would open, say, example item two, we'll just go here, and then you want to hit new template and then it automatically will fill the things from the template in. So an example for me would be with my journals. If I have a new journal that I want to write, I just will hit like morning journal, evening journal, and it'll fill in all of those prompts that I've already pre-written. Another example is if you are going to do repeating tasks. This is a game changer. <laughs> if you want to add a repeating task, you can come over to your template just by hitting this drop down arrow, hit edit this template, and then turn on the repeat. Let's just say I wanna do it every week. You can change which day it comes through. So if you want it to come Saturday, you want it to repeat every week, you want it to repeat every four weeks, whatever it might be and then you have a little start date and when to create it. So this is how I personally handle all of my cleaning tasks that need to happen every single week. I just put it on a recurring template and then it'll automatically add that to my to-do list every single week. Okay, so that is kind of the overview of databases. Now I'm going to show you all of the different types of databases. So this one obviously here is a table view database. When you drop down to the little layout and click here, you have all of these different stylized options. You can choose to hide the database title if you don't want that there. You can turn off the vertical lines, which sometimes that's nice, sometimes I, I like the vertical lines. <laughs> and then you can choose to wrap the columns or not, which just means that if you have extra text, it will make a new line or it won't make a new line based on how you choose it. They've also recently added an option to change how you open the pages. You can totally change that right here. I love full pages just because it bothers me when things aren't all the way full. <laughs> but there are some times that I also want side peaks, so you can adjust that as you wish. My favorite ways to use tables are for my master to-do list. It shows everything that's going on and things like my to-buy list. Mainly my favorite way is whenever I need to be checking something off because it helps me to see that in list form and be able to check it off. So next up we have the board view. Instead of showing up in a table format, all of your items are going to show up as little cards, which is super cute. You can change a lot of the different things about this, including how big the cards are. So if you want them to be small, you can do that. And then you can also choose to add a card preview if you want. When I use cards, I love to use images as the previews because I think it's pretty and fun to look at. So if you want to add a page cover, you can use that for the preview. You can also change how you group your cards. So if you want to show it by date instead of it's going by sub item right now, you can change it to date. And then there's ways to sort it. I absolutely love choosing the color columns. You can see an example in my meal plan of how I use the color columns. I just think it adds a little bit of color and fun. You can also choose to hide the empty groups, which I often do. Like this one that says no date here. Usually if I have a date property, the date property is full for my tasks. So it makes no sense to have an empty one sitting there and I usually just turn that off. However, if you are using this as a workflow where you might want to move the cards from like day to day, for example, you're probably gonna want those all to be there so you can just easily move them down the line. There's also an option to subgroup, which is kind of fun. I do this with my little workout database to see all my YouTube workouts that I have saved. That way I can group it both by the type of workout it is and then also by the area it targets. So if it's like my abs versus like upper body, that kind of a thing. And then I can just easily grab what I want out of whatever category it might be. Here, if I choose to subgroup by the sub item, you see now it has added an additional grouping and you kind of have like a grid looking thing now, which is fun. Next is a timeline view. You will have the option to turn on this little show table here and it will also 
kind of give you a little side peek of your table view. And then you can change whatever it shows there by hitting this table properties here and then show date. If you want to visualize things within the timeline property and also see your table, this is a really great option because it helps you be able to visualize these in two different ways. For now, I'm just gonna turn off the little show table and head back quickly to the overall database settings because there is one thing in the timeline that's different from all the others and that is this dependencies right here. This allows you to kind of draw arrows on the timeline between things depending on the order of how they need to go. I'm just gonna go ahead and say create new relation for this one, but this does again work the same way as the little sub items did where it creates a relation within the database to relate two items to each other. So to draw the arrows, let's go ahead and just open example three real quick. We're gonna say that it is blocked by example two and then it's blocking sub item one. So that's how you get the little arrows. It's not something that I personally use very often, but I am using them quite a bit for planning our honeymoon vacation that we're taking this July. I'm trying to keep some of our destinations a little bit secret until we go just to be safe on the internet. But here is one example of how I've used them to map out our destinations. Next we have the calendar view. Again, this one goes by date mainly because it is a calendar. There's really not a ton of settings here, but one that I really love is that they've recently changed it to just show the week if you want. So let me go to today. You can see now it only shows the one week and what's going on for that week. And I love this for my to-dos. I use it every single week to make sure that I haven't stacked too many things on one day and that I'm not over committing myself to anything. And I also use this to show some events that we have coming up just so I don't forget, but I do keep that one in the month view. Next is the list database. This one doesn't have a ton of settings within it, but I do love using this one. If I'm looking for something kind of minimalistic and only to kind of show on the side of my page because it really is very minimal Minimal, there's no table to it it's literally just the pages and then if you choose to show some properties so like example I go here and click on show date you can see that that will show up on the side and this is something that I do with my health and wellness page to show the notes that I've been taking on different courses or things that I've been learning about and it's very minimal and I really like the look of that and then the last option is the gallery option. And this one is incredibly similar to the board view. The only difference between the gallery and the board is that the board makes you sort by a property because it has to have those columns for the cards to go in. And with the gallery, you can just have everything show, no sorting required. Again, you can choose what you want to show on the cards. If you say none, it'll be a little tiny one and then choose the size of the cards as well. I love using this property to display my recipes database in my meal planning template. Okay, lastly, let's chat about relations. Relations are probably the most powerful part of databases. And if you're wanting to do some more advanced things in your Notion, you're definitely going to want to know how to use these. I'm going to quickly switch this back to a table view because that is the easiest way for me to see what's going on with the relations. And let's just go ahead and quickly add one. So I'm gonna hit new property and choose relation. I'll go ahead and link it to those next actions. When you do that, you have the option to show on next actions or not, and it really depends on what you're using your relation for. If you want to pull information from one database and have it show in the other, then you really only need to show it on the one database. If you want to relate both of them to each other and have information from one show on the other and vice versa, you need to do it both ways. So for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I don't want to show it and then I'll add the relation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say this example three item is going to get linked to this look for wall sconces action. <laughs> I still need to do that, believe it or not. Okay, so now each item has something linked in next actions. Now the cool part is that you can pull information from that other database based on what you've linked. So for that, I'm going to add a roll up and here you can choose what it is that you wanna pull. So if I choose the relation to next actions, that's the database that we just set up, you can pull whatever property you want from that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull priority and show original. And now it shows you what the priority of that item 
looking for wall sconces is on your example item. Now, obviously you're like, why would I want that? That makes no sense. Yes, I am just showing you how to do it on a random example database. So let me take you to my goal planning template because that is one of my favorite relations that I use all the time. Okay, so here we are on the goal planning and where I really use this is in my goals. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this first goal right here so I can show you what's going on. Within my goal planning template, I love to have a little plan of action and then my task items that have to do with that specific goal. So here I have a filtered view of my task database and you can see that there is a relation property to my goals and all of, all of them contain the work through my HTMA test because that is the goal that we're working within right now. If I hit edit property, you can see the back end of this relation. I have this shown on my goals. So this relates both of the databases back end to each other. And this is so that when I'm working on a task, I can see which goal that that task goes with. But then on the other hand, when I'm working within that goal, it actually goes here where I have a rollup property that links to my tasks and it calculates how many things are marked done that are also related to this goal. This is truly where the power of databases comes in with Notion because now you can do all of these calculations without even lifting a finger between these databases, which is super awesome. When it's coming to relations and rollups and things like that, you have to remember that you want to relate the two pages together that you need the information from, and that's how you're going to be able to pull that information. You can't just say that you want an entire column from one table to be pulled into another table, because that's not entirely how that works. <laughs> and that brings me to my next point, which is, when do you choose to filter a table versus relating two tables together? And the answer is it depends on what data that you want. So if you're interested in data that's coming from one table and you want a whole column of the data in that table, then what I would suggest you do is just make a new view of that table somewhere else. You can pull that one column that you want and then you can add other columns that might have what else you're looking to add to that table with that information. And then when you go back to those two different views that you've created, you can choose to show or hide certain properties based on which view you're looking at. The time that I use relations is when I know the two items in two different databases are related to each other and I might want to pull information from that database about that task into the other database that has to also do with that task. Hence the term relation, because they're kind of related. They may have to do with each other. You just might want the information from another table to show up in yours. Relations are certainly pretty abstract when you're trying to talk about them. So the best advice I can give you is to just get in there and start practicing. Try some things on your own. Hopefully my little goal table helped you visualize how I use that and how powerful it can be when you do use it that way. But it will certainly make more sense to you once you get in there and try it for yourself. I hope this video helped you get a little bit of an overview of how to use databases in Notion. They're my favorite tool, so I'm excited for you guys to get in there and try it. If you're looking for an awesome setup in Notion that helps increase your productivity and organize your to-dos, be sure to check out the template that I myself actually use. It's in my Etsy shop. Plus you can get that goal planner that you saw, that comes with it. But if you do want the free version of that, you can grab that in the description box below as well. Be sure to subscribe for more lifestyle and productivity videos, and I will see you guys in the next one. Now go make some awesome Notion databases. <laughs> Bye guys.